Hey guys, Mohan Bobear here and today I'm going to show you how to build a successful software company. Let's get to it. So hey, I don't care if you don't have a product yet and you're just thinking of starting a software company or maybe you do have a product yet, you even made some sales but you're not sure what to do next and how to make it a sustainable company or maybe you're already a sustainable technology company, you already have sales coming in, maybe you've been making above half a million or a million a year and you want to make sure that you're doing your best next steps in order to progress in your business. So today I'm going to walk you through each of those phases into phase one where you don't have anything yet, phase two when you already have something going on for you and phase three when you already have something legit but you want to scale it even faster or maybe you want to have a lifestyle business. So let's go through each of those phases and show you what you need to focus on next in order to make sure you're making the best next steps to make you a successful software company. So phase number one is when you don't have a product yet. You have some idea, maybe you see some need in the market, some market in pain that you want to help. Maybe you even have some kind of uh, prototype of your product. In, maybe you created something in Balsamic. Maybe you even talked to a few, it depends obviously on your product. Maybe you talk to a few potential clients, but you don't have anything legit yet. So what do you need to focus on here? So my first really, really big, big suggestion for you is don't spend all of your money into this phase and all of your time before you know you have a paying client and there is a demand for that product. I know many, many people who literally work for a few months or sometimes more than a year to just develop the product before they have any clients, before they know that those clients want that specific solution to their problem. Maybe they want some kind of a solution, but they're not getting any feedback from anyone other than themselves as the founder, as the CEO of this company. So please, please, please make sure you're getting some feedback on your product and some objective feedback, right? So asking your mom about what she's thinking about this product and solution isn't enough. You need to talk to potential paying clients and ideally go and find yourself your first paying clients. Make sure, like go and find someone who's willing to pay for that solution and give him a discount. Tell him, hey, I'm willing to give you, the price is gonna be X, but I'll give you 50% of it for a lifetime if you're gonna use that product right now and that alone will show you that there is some demand someone really want to i guess in the end of the day put a credit card give you the money send you checks send you wire send you money and that's the only time that you can start a business when you have some money in exchange for value that you bring to the table and unless you're getting that feedback please don't waste months or i, I know people who wasted literally two years of their life to develop a product before they have anyone who's willing to pay them. So please, please, please make sure that you know that there's a demand, there, there's a demand for it. The other thing you might tell me is, hey, I have this amazing idea, but I need to create this crazy product, right? And there's a lot of cost to even create some kind of a, a first version of that product. Like I went to this technology conference a few days ago and I saw this solution to clean buildings, like very tall buildings an automatic solution, a robot that can do all that work. Because if you know, when you see tall buildings, the only way to clean them right now is literally people go through those buildings, going down the building to clean them. So they, they found this really cool idea of creating this robot that's combining AI and, and all that big, big words right in technology. And in their case, yeah, they need some money and then you can talk about going out and raising capital to create that product. But even for them, I wouldn't go and even try to raise capital before you have some kind of a, a demand or some kind of an interest from a potential client, ideally an LOI or something, or someone who said, hey, if this happens, I'm willing to pay. Otherwise, first of all, they're going to be much more diluted if at all, like if someone's going to give them the money, they're going to be diluted a lot from their equity because they, they basically have nothing yet. And secondly, like I said, yeah, if they have something tangible, like someone potentially looking to buy them, then they are going to, first of all, be able to raise much more and diluted much less because they, they basically show them, hey, look, there's something going on. So if that's your case, you have a product that you need to develop, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, still go out there and make sure you have demand for that product and ideally get some kind of LOIs or some kind of expressions of interest from potential clients that you want to work with in the future. Now let's move to phase two, which is basically, you already have some products or a main product basically, and you already had some sales going in, right? So you made some money, 
but what's next? What you should what should you focus on right now? Should you go and raise capital? Should you go and hire people? So I'm assuming you already have a product right now in phase two and you already made some sales and you're just not sure what's next. So here is my biggest suggestion for you in this phase. If you have a product and you made some sales and you know that there's demand, you're only focused at this stage from zero to around one million a year in sales. Literally, your only focus when you wake up in the morning until you go to sleep is to make sales. That's all. Like literally, all you need to do all day is marketing and sales. You gotta bring in more revenues. You gotta bring in enough clients to hit that threshold where you can then do things with them and grow faster. But at this stage, you gotta find out one marketing source or one advertising source, or obviously depends on the way that you bring clients, but you gotta find one way to bring clients that is more effective than the other ways. And you gotta get your cut down, your cost of acquisitions, you gotta, your cost to acquire clients, all those different words, it doesn't matter. You gotta bring them at the lowest amount of possible and basically be able to convert them from just a suspect, a potential customer or someone who's looking at your advertising or your emails or whatever ways you find those clients to a point where they're paying clients. So you gotta find out what are the best ways and you can test all of this, all those different advertising platforms and you might tell me, hey, you know, this is expensive. Where should I start? Should I start with Facebook, LinkedIn, other social media platforms? Maybe I need to go to conferences or do like direct outreach. What are my steps? And my biggest suggestion to you at this phase is just look at your competitors. What are they doing in order to bring in clients? And I would tell you, start there. So if you see your competitors do Facebook ads, go to Facebook as well. If they're promoting their stuff on Facebook for the last few months, trust me, something is working there. So you gotta go there and start there, do the same that they're doing, but make sure you have a unique USP, something that position you as different, something with an extra value or something that you bring to the table that your competitors are not. And when you're able to do that, and you're obviously testing your platforms there and testing your advertising and marketing campaigns and the way that you talk to your clients, then you find that way to bring in clients. And that's your only focus should be right now. Between zero to one million a year in revenues, that literally should be your number one focus. Just go out there and bring in sales. Now let's move to phase three. Phase three, I assume you have a product. I assume you're already making some revenues, let's say you're making at least 20, 30 grand MRR in monthly recurring revenues, um, around half a million a year in sales revenues, and what should you do next, right? So at this stage, obviously you potentially have some employees, uh, maybe you even raised capital already or not, it doesn't matter. At this stage, you really need to make the decision. And obviously if you raise capital versus if you don't, it's gonna differentiate your path. So if you didn't raise capital and you just bootstrap, um, you now need to make the decision. Do I want to run a lifestyle business or do I want to go and be number one? And my suggestion to you here is unless you go and try to be number one, it's going to be really hard to sustain a lifestyle business for a long term. Um, I know people who try to start businesses, especially in the technology space, and they think that, okay, once I'll make it to 30 grand a month, it's going to stay like this forever. And especially in the tech space, things changing so fast, that you gotta, you just must innovate. So unless you're working on becoming number one, it's gonna be really hard to sustain that lifestyle as this, I'm um, a four hour work week guy who just have a business running for him. So my suggestion to you here is that don't trust the lifestyle businesses, especially in the tech space when you're running a software company, you gotta build something fast, you gotta grow it, ideally try to become number one in your field, in your niche, in your small sector, and then do decide do you sell it fast or do you continue to grow by doing deals at this stage you gotta think about doing deals about potentially buying other companies raising capital from vcs this is the stage where you gotta think about those things don't settle on the lifestyle business because it just won't hold for long term and trust me i know that from experience and i know it from many people that i work with so ideally at this stage you're just making the decision i want to dominate my market i want to be number one and the best way for you to do it is get access to capital and start to do deals and capital there's many ways that you can do that and ideally use that capital to do deals go and do things like strategic partnerships with other companies and go and buy other companies either your competitors or complementary businesses for some reason many people think that they gotta be facebook at like the level of facebook and make billions of dollars 
before they can go and buy other companies like Facebook, both WhatsApp and Instagram. But you can start that very early. You can start that when you already have like a 20, 30, 50 grand a month business, you can already go and do those acquisitions and buy other companies because we are using the acquisitions targets assets in order to pay for the, the business itself. And we're paying back the money that we raised from the business cash flow, from the business that we bought, we're using their cash flow to pay back the debt service that we just raised basically. So you can do it as soon as possible and the faster you're gonna do it, the sooner you're gonna do it, the faster you'll be able to dominate your market. So, and you're just gonna be able to grow much faster. So let's say you have an idea for a new product that you wanna to sell to your customers. Instead of creating everything from within and innovating and, and bringing more developers and, and hiring those developers and so many organic intern, in, internal work that you gotta do, instead you can just use all those resources that you already have and go and buy a company that already have all those resources, that already had to test all those different things, that already have great talent and developers and other employees that already built that company. They already know what marketing to use in order to bring clients at the best way possible. So at this stage, start to do deals. That's why Facebook bought uh, WhatsApp and bought Instagram. That's the fastest way to grow because you get immediate access to more products, to more talent, to more distribution channels. There's so many things that you can get access to by going out there and buy competitors or complementary businesses. So I hope you enjoyed those three phases in building a technology business, a software business, and I hope you can resonate with where you're at right now. If you don't have a product yet, if you do have a product, or you already have some kind of a business going on for you, and you want to grow it faster and do deals. So remember, it's all about when you just start, get your first client as soon as possible. When you already have something going on, bring in as much sales as possible. And then when you're at the later stage, let's say above half a million a year, above a million a year, then start to think about deals and capital. When you have all those different focuses in each of those stages, that's how you can grow the fastest. And yeah, hope you enjoyed all those different lessons and I'll see you soon.